मेरा नाम फिश है और मैं दिल्ली में रहती हूँ क्योंकि मेरा हस्बैंड दिल्ली से है और आई मैं लूटी का फाउंडर है एंड आई मेक ब्रॉलेस टीशर्ट्स in india any time i talk to any women about you know how do you stay modest at home it's always like oh my gosh it's so uncomfortable like always have to stay modest around my in-laws and my friends and you know when i started this business i realized that this is such an important product for women especially in india it's just amazing that there hasn't been any other product like this yet <laughs> like surely so many people struggle with this that you would think oh all these big companies would have already done it but it's just not there and everyone just accepts that bra is the only way because i think no one's thought of a better way of implementing this kind of no you know staying modest but being comfortable i think and i know that this is what women want based on what people have said to me after they brought the product um i mean the, the first thing they always say is oh my gosh i can't believe there is I, this is this exists We're just going to the office. We're going to film, I guess, an interview style. I'll be just talking a bit more about the brand. Um, I'll show the lettering. I'm wearing a luti, of course. Yeah, pretty stress-free with the driver, given that I don't even drive. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty chilled. It's not far either. Probably 10, 15 minutes. And Monday to Friday? Uh, it's very here and there because. If I can work from home, then I'll work from home. But usually, I need to like use the machines or like sort something out at the office or like pack an order. So then I have to go, and I'm very much like, if I think it has to be done, I have to do it like there and then. I can't like wait until like Monday or something to do it again, um, which is kind of bad. I'm not very good at relaxing. <laughs> so this is going to put be part of our new range. So the main problem was that. Um, I thought the jump between wearing a bra to not wearing a bra at all would be too big, but I thought, oh, you know what, pajamas might be like a good stepping stone because then at home people would that wear their pajamas. But because I've only designed for two types of pajama sets, so the black version and the pink version, the design is too specific and it doesn't really suit everyone. So I thought I'd launch a uh, like a classic tease range, so like neutral colours, black, whites, greys, navy, those kinds of colours, um, because. A lot of the feedback I got was, oh, you know what, but like, do you have plain colours? And I'm like, oh, well, I have a pink and a black. Um, but, you know, it's also good because it, it meant that I spent some time to develop more of the, like, yeah, how well the product is. Not just the coverage, because the coverage was there, but also just like how the material feels, how thick the material is, how things are cut, you know, fix some of the collar and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited. Um, and it's funny because... I realized that people wanted shirts because people were only buying shirts. Like, I'd have the shorts and the trousers on the website, but people would only buy the tops. I was like, oh, you know what? People only want the tops. And then lots of people were messaging me being like, I'm not buying it because I don't like the design. I'm like, fair enough. <laughs> I'm excited to show, I guess, the behind the scenes because I, I feel like it's that aspect of business that's not really shown, what the day-to-day -day really is like. I feel like there's always this kind of overarching kind of, these overarching themes about, you know, what you should do in a business, like be consistent, be resilient, blah, 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 blah. But what is it? What are those decisions like to make every day? How do I motivate myself? What does my day-to-day -day actually look like? And I feel like that's kind of, I don't know, that's what I find interesting. Um, and so, yeah, I want to be able to showcase that and hopefully it's interesting for people who want to watch it as well. So this is actually an old house. And so um, I'm very, very lucky just to be able to use the office space. Come, come. Oh, thank you. 
Welcome to my office. <laughs> so we've got our backdrop. Okay, there are lights on right now. And then all my products and my machines. We're just gonna turn the fan off because the AC is already on. And also this sign, it's not technically the like the exact way my logo is designed, but my my friend gave it to me on my birthday. So was it my birthday? I think it was my birthday. Anyway, I thought it was really cute. So just lights up the place. Nice pink hue. <laughs> so let me do a, a mini office tour. Thank you. Right, so these are all the defective products <laughs> that can't be sold. I mean, they're fine. I think most people wouldn't realize, but there'll just be like one tiny spot here or like one tiny spot there. So I've just kind of left it on here. And if people want to buy it at a reduced price, they can. So like when my friends come, they kind of just like, oh, I just, I'll just buy it. And I'm like, yeah, cool. I like do all my prototyping here. So like I've got like fabric here. Those are used for the actual products. And then, um, uh, yeah, I just come here, like just test the product. These are like my little trial clothes that I get into, like I get into some shorts, um, yeah. Uh, all kinds of fabric, like there's a bunch of fabrics in the back uh, behind this mirror. Um, yeah, well, when I started um, designing this product, I actually didn't make my shirts from scratch. Um, I actually just bought them from Large Fenugger and then I just designed the lining and then just like stuck them on the inside just to see if it would work. Um, but I realized it was cheaper just to get the raw material and then just, either sew it myself or later I got a seamstress to do it. So yeah, just got some plain t-shirts, like lots of materials I'm working with. Um, this box here underneath. So this is called heat transfer vinyl and it's usually used for lettering. So like on my shirt here, you'll be able to see Luti. So I actually got these machines from the UK and from the US. So one, they do, they do sell it here, but it's like double the price. Um, so when I went to the US, I bought one machine um, and it's a commercial cutting machine. So it means I can cut all of these designs out um, and I have the, like, the software that comes with the machines. But I'm very paranoid, so I just got a second <laughs> machine because it's like, oh my gosh, like, if I can't cut it, what will I do? Um, yeah, and obviously I always thought, oh, God forbid this business doesn't work out, I'm gonna use the machines for myself, you know? Like, now I make these gifts for my friends, like I make, like, shirts with their name on it, or like, I get, like, little wallets and, like, put their name on it, so, like, it's great for just general use. And then I have many heating machines to put the uh, lining on, so these, they require heat to be activated, so, like, I'll cut, cut the um, text on the machines and then I'll use this heat transfer vinyl and then I'll put it on here and I'll heat it with the various machines depending on what size it is. So um, initially I started off with an iron then I was like, oh, you know, I better get like a proper heat machine. And then this is the little one. So just for like super small lettering, like this one's very small, so it'll just fit. <laughs> and then here we do the packaging. So, this table is always super clean. Like the first thing I usually do in here is just like wipe it clean. Um, and then this is my shelf of products. So right now, um, we still haven't launched our uh, classic tees collection, but these are the pajama sets. So tops on this side, shorts on this side. Um, you can kind of see the smaller sizes seem a bit more popular. Like the bigger sizes, people are getting it, but not as much. So I just bring it here and then package it in here. And in each package I have like little things that I put in. So you should put this card. So this is kind of just cute and shows like how the product works. So it's just got a double layer with the lining and then a bit more about the product. Like you can iron it, you can wash it, all of those things, which are the classic questions people ask. Um, otherwise I just, yeah, I just have my packaging bags which just in here right now. They just ship it and then just that's kind of the end. <laughs> we also have this backdrop. So actually behind there's like a white paper one. So I just thought if I was always gonna take photos and videos, it would just be better just to have it here since I have the space as well. And um, 
Yeah, I had, you know, like on Instagram, what I love is those feeds that just look so like aesthetic. And I want whatever I'm doing, you know, to look really, really aesthetic. And I, I have this vision that when we do all the packaging, which you and I are doing, um, I'll be able to shoot those shots like here of me actually like packaging a product. But it'll be like crisp, you know, like crisp and gorgeous white background. You know, I have a um, like a light here and a diffuser. So, you know, just a good investment in my opinion. <laughs> so it's so funny. I started this, um, I guess I started designing this product about two years ago um, after I really struggled staying modest. And I did all my market research. I asked women of all ages, of all ethnicities from all across the world, whoever I could find to speak to about it. And of course, especially Indian women. And I distinctly remember this because I asked older women, let's say older women is, you know, 40 plus, 40 to 60 or 70. And I said, oh, hey, you know, what do you think about this product? You know, would you ever consider not wearing a bra? And you could like, imagine you could wear a t-shirt and you wouldn't have to wear a bra and you could stay modest. And they were absolutely like, no, I would never ever switch. I 100% would wear my bra because for them, they've already worn their bra for 20, 30 years. And so it's so, Odd to even think, oh, I wouldn't, you know, I would um, switch because they're, they're even sleeping in their bras, right? But I remember even before I launched, I, it was the older people who were messaging me. They're like, when are you launching? I've just twisted my shoulder. I can't put on my bra. Can I please buy one now? I'm like, I'm not ready yet. It's the older people who loved it so much because I think for them, it's also, they, they care a lot less at that age, you know? Um, they they almost accept the discomfort, but until they saw it, like in real life, right? At the time when I did my rocket research, I was just talking in the air. I was like, imagine this. But once they saw the product, they were like, oh my gosh, please, can I have one? So I, yeah, surprisingly, I think, you know, the older generation are much more open to it, actually. <sighs> I know Zish from London. We met at university at a house party. So it was John, Laura, and Jacob's house in Acton, I think. And yeah, we met there. So it's been five years, five and a half years since we met. And now we're married. So it's been a long time. She is sometimes really dumb, but sometimes really smart. And <clears throat> She's always really fascinating with what she says. So she says things that other people generally don't say. And she is very honest. So it's fun discussing things with her. There is a part of Zishwan that's always wanted to be very creative. And she's always felt the need to make something new and solve problems with creativity and business put together. And I think Luti is an amazing manifestation of creativity and business um, while pro solving a problem that half of India's population, or I don't know, like the world population faces of just being comfortable at home. So I think it's a great business idea, and I think if anyone can do it, it's Zishan. It's been stressful. I think for her, it has been quite a tough journey so far. Um, she's had the idea in some ways for quite some time, but it took time for it to sort of become clearer and I remember the times when she used to discuss lots of ideas with me. She still does, but she eventually narrowed down to this one where she thought that um, a problem that she faced, if she could solve for herself, she wanted to solve it for others as well. And she came here in 2020 uh, to Delhi. And it's been over three years and this whole time, there's been some part of her that's been working towards making Luti a reality. Um, but it's not... 
it's not caught speed until this year. So it's only when she started prototyping and testing different materials and I don't know, like started innovating on tangible clothes that her brain started excluding and like removing things that don't work and narrowing down on things that work. And I think when she eventually figured out something that works, that covers the nipples relatively well while still being light and comfortable and when she figured out the design and the material um, <laughs> working with a patent consultant obviously she filed a patent first and then once the patent was filed I think she felt that she could now like go all out which she has and she's taken up a lot of stress on herself to market it, to figure out who to market it to, to figure out how to market it, um, what sizes the products should be, um, what colors the product should be, what she should sell, what she should not sell. Um, should she have a physical store, online store, Instagram, all of that. So, and understanding the Indian market is in itself a task. And given that she's been like, largely doing it by herself, it's quite commendable that she's come so far. You don't need to be academically smart to solve real life problems. And I'm sure that Zishwan will solve big problems using her amazing brain, her magnificent determination to not give up and her willingness to get down into the warehouse or the factory or the, I don't know, the, the room and just make something work instead of just delaying and procrastinating and making it 100% perfect. I'm involved as a <laughs> motivational consultant and an ideas bouncing board. Um, I'm not the most creative person, so a lot of my answers are, you got this, Zichuan. Um, um, yeah, she tends to know how to solve problems that she faces, um, but she just needs someone to give her the confidence that she can do it. And starting a business by yourself and being the sole person involved in it is not very easy. So. I think I'm mostly involved in like, yeah, just a sounding board and someone who can give her realistic motivation. And I filed her patent. How was that? <laughs> it was good. She, she did something innovative for sure. It's not been done before. And yeah, I think Simple problems sometimes need creative solutions, not the most complex solutions. So yeah, you can, you can have patents on things which are inventive as long as they're inventive, as long as yeah, you've made it work and it solves a problem. So the patent has been filed, which means that she has protection from the date that the patent was filed. So no one can now copy the Luti like design and um, functionality without Zishwan's permission. So they need to license the patent, legally speaking, if they want to use it in a manner which is commercial, so like selling it or exporting it or anything like that. Um, Generally, patents are just 20-year monopolies. So if you file a patent and it gets granted, um, you can stop others from using that technology which you've patented for a period of 20 years. And after 20 years, you can't stop anyone. So basically, patenting is like a social transaction where society gives you a monopoly for 20 years for publicly disclosing 
what you've done, what you've invented, and you get the commercial benefit for 20 years. And then after 20 years, anyone can use that technology. So right now it's patent pending. It's patent pending. And how long is it going to be pending for? It depends on which jurisdiction. So patents are territorial. So we filed one in India. We filed an international application and we'll be choosing the countries that we want to file it in. So depending on how Luti goes and which markets Zishuan sees traction in, we have about a year more to decide which countries we want to um, file the patent in, in addition to India. Um, because Zishuan is an individ a female individual specifically, she can apply for expedited examination. So maybe one to two years, uh, depending on how the patent office sees it, especially in India. It can be faster in some jurisdictions, slower in others. But I think one to two years is what I expect here. I think Luti will be a problem-solving focused clothing brand that sells online. So I think Zishan is quite customer focused. So if people buy it online, they'll be buying it for the reason that they like the functionality and comfort of a Luti. And I think she'll be selling to people all across the world, especially in Asian households where modesty at home, that you can't have like the nipples visible even through like your nightwear or your t-shirts at home and girls don't want to wear bras or even women don't want to wear bras I think it will catch traction and I don't even know like what use cases it has in other countries but I can imagine conservative households even in western countries where the willingness to pay is relatively high buying her clothes just online so I think Zishwan needs to figure out um, and Luti needs to figure out how to like attract that market um, and sort of make sure that they understand that it's a good quality product. And I know that like all of her um, processes are like environment friendly. She uses like all Lutis are cotton 100% and they're sourced ethically as well. So Zishan's quite focused on like keeping the business sustainable in terms of the environment and in terms of economics. So I think it's a long game, but in one to two years, I think she will be having Luti as an established brand in a niche of the clothing industry where people like these functional aspects of clothing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is um, we're designing a new uh, collar. So let me just show you. So currently, the collars look like this. I mean, this is a defective product, so don't think that this is the proper one. You can see this interlock uh, sewing pattern, right? And I just thought it was really messy. What, I want, what I've now done is I've designed this. So you see this little collar, it's all covered up. So it just makes it look a lot neater. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna put a little bit of text on this, uh, collar and the way I was thinking of doing it was that I thought this would be a great gift you know to have some personalized text so what someone will eventually be able to do is they'll go to the website and they'll be like oh you know what I want to buy a gift for my girlfriend we're just gonna cut it now so there's a few things we're cutting we're cutting this this text on the collar and then we've got the logo so we'll just put the logo on also on the back we've got this vinyl um, this is the mat um, and all I have to do is just uh, place it on the mat. I'm going to place it this way. Um, I just stick it down with tape again because I don't want it to be like flapping inside the machine. Okay, so this just goes in the machine. It'll go match this pink exactly, and the text will come here, along here. But we're going to do the logo in white here. I'm just gonna move it a little bit. So there's a mirror option, so it actually prints it flipped. Because if you imagine the material, it's like flipped and then ironed on. Okay, it's connected via Bluetooth. So we'll just press 
in. Give it a second. <laughs> Okay, it's done. Okay, so all I have to do is remove it. And, okay, so, I usually keep the tape because it will re-stick my next piece. So I'll just start cutting it. Just cutting around it. So do you see, only the lettering remains. And then I just have to remove the little bits on the inside. So. Okay, so what we're gonna do it now is just place it on this collar. Okay, so all I do is just make sure that there's no excess dust on this area. So, think here, let me just see, yep. So it's not perfect. So, um, all I do is place it on top and then heat this to, can't remember the temperature of this one. Then hold it for about 20 seconds. Three, four, So that's when it's helpful to have a bigger machine as well, but for ease, I'm just showing you on this little machine. Okay, so we we'll just have to wait for it to cool for a second. Peel it very carefully. So it's not stuck down properly yet. So we'll have to go in again, which I normally do anyway. And it's back. That out so you can see what it really looks like. Ta-da! And then you can have your personalized text, you know. And also, the reason I love this so much it's also because it's kind of subtle. You know, like once you put it on, like even this one has text, you won't be able to, so no one else will be able to see it, only you'll be able to see it. And you'll know this message on, is on the shirt. <laughs> cool. Okay, so to do the new colors, I had to decide the, the colors first. So I picked my colors um, and then I, what I did was I sent my fabric supplier this. So I just did them on PowerPoint. <laughs> Pick the colors that I liked. This is the hex code, right? And he wanted the Pantone. So I went and found the most similar Pantone. Um, this one I just couldn't find, so I just let it be. Um, but this green, okay. So he sent me all of these. He sent me three variations. I put the one that I like first, and then the two that I don't like. So I'll just show you because to me, they look exactly the same. I like cannot tell the difference. Um, but you know, there are some subtle differences. So I think this one is lighter than this one. Maybe blue is not a good background. <laughs> yeah, this one, I mean, it's so, it's so funny, right? but these are all supposed to be different dip dyes. Steel, blue, gray, black type color. Now, this is all we need to go to the market for. Um, I actually sent him a follow-up text and I said like, uh, hey, yeah, like I'm not, I don't like the colors, but can we, can you try and get like a better color? <laughs> it's a little busy because it's uh, Sunday and also uh, afternoon. So people, it's usually very, very quiet um, in the morning, but it's much louder, much, much busier in the evening. Oh, 
Okay, let's go find some fabric. So this is a very popular market in Delhi and I think it's definitely known for having very affordable products. I mean, I think most of you will come and shop here as opposed to anywhere else. So we'll go and find the fabric now. So from what I understand, they there's a lot of um, like a H&M or an M&S, all of these shops, they, I think they discard these um, unsold products. So a lot of these shirts, they come from um, these companies and they're sold really, really cheap. So they're not fakes, they're actually genuine products that have just been discarded because I don't know, maybe they're out of season or whatever the reason is. So right now I'm looking for the green, but I want cotton. Um, because I think sometimes the color can be printed differently um, once you use different materials. So I want to find specifically cotton, 100% cotton if possible. Um, I think I'll have to go find actual shirts which are that color, otherwise I don't really know if I can find it. So you can see all of these are kind of more for uh, designing dresses and suits and quarters and that, that kind of stuff. A lot of sequins. <laughs> I'm just looking for a green colored cotton fabric. I want close to this color, but not this exact color. So I need to go and find the colors which are similar to this. Um, but it should be on cotton so it can be similar enough to what I want. So my fabric supply can just supply me the correct color. Right now he's only got the digital version, so it's hard to see what it's like printed and what it's like as a, as a paint. Yeah, so we'll keep going. I think we'll find it in the t-shirt section. Um, because the t-shirts will already be that colour. Oh, sorry. Plain fabric hair? Plain. Ah, cotton hair? Cotton. Ah, green colour she is. Green. Green. Yeah. Yeah. Ha. Huh. Horror. <laughs> Material care hair? Cotton. Cotton? Me all colour hair? Hara, Hara, Kakala hair. Me. Me. Ye color chie. Me. Thank you. <laughs> To the spin? Huh? Uh, to the spin? Ha, <laughs> oh, 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 green. Green. oh, 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 hair. Me. Bus. King of Curses. <laughs> Is this the name? Because. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. Okay, ha, me le lo. Oh ha. Sorry, ek oh ha. Ek aur nahi hai to hai. Ha, okay, me le lo. Ek hi. Ha. 250 ha. Oh, change hai? 50. Change it. Change it. Change it. Nee, nee, change nee. Change it. 50 hai. I don't know. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dad! It's actually quite a cute shirt as well. So we'll get it. All right, done. So I'm at my fabric supplies shop. So I have actually not been here because he moved, but he basically has a showroom and then also like, I guess like a kind of office where, which is where I've been. And we kind of like did all the sampling. We looked at what materials he had, um, learned a bit more about what he does. Um, but today we're gonna, we're gonna do a bit of work and we're just gonna go speak to him and just understand his work a little bit better because it is quite interesting. Yeah, <laughs> should we go? Quite early. Hi. Hi. How are you? This is uh, Anch, my videographer. Hi. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for inviting me. Cool. How's your work going? Well, that's why the space has reduced as of now. Yeah. Please, as soon as we get that space. Yeah. No, this is good. It's good. Yes, but what is happening is that I lose retail space also. No? I always see. Retail space is, is. I mean, every inch is. You know, you earn based on. So yeah. I've got the green, yeah. so we'll do a bit of work first. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, so I have the pink as well. Okay, but... Are you... I just need... The, uh, the, the black is black, so there's no problem. But it's the, the pink when you get... Yeah, it's the pink which I It'll be exact match. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is the green I want to oh, do. Okay. Is this fine? Yeah, if you give me a color like this, it can match it, doesn't it? Okay, but can you give me a sample before you order it? I will do that. Okay. It's always a lab dip is given. Okay, yeah. Before we actually... But this colour, yeah, it's that's fine. That's okay. So how's cool. your work now? I mean, what is what is it exa exactly what is you up to that? Yeah, so I'm making these braless t-shirts for okay. women. Yeah, you were saying last time. Yeah, years, yes. so it just is a t-shirt with two um, lining. Um, mm. It's two layers on the front okay. and it's got a lining. Okay. So it just keeps you yeah, modest. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but um, before you know how I was doing the pattern design, mm. Mm. I'm doing just plain colours now mm. because I think people don't really want pyjamas. Mm. The designs are very specific, so I want to do like the classic okay. t-shirt range. Okay. So like all the colours I sent okay. you. Okay. Because I feel like I don't have the big sales yet. I want to try and build that now yeah. with the okay. new colours. Right. And then we'll do like all kinds of things. Okay. <laughs> so you plan to retail all over India or how, how does it work? Is it only online? Or right now I'm just selling online. Okay. So I just have an online store you can just buy directly okay. on there. Okay. Or my friends come and they come to my office and they okay. buy it. Okay. Um, but I do want to do international. Okay. International, but okay. working it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Are you doing it internationally, or you're doing? I do it? mostly international. Yeah. Because, like I said, my focus is mainly on traditional fabrics. Yeah. That is what I do mainly. Yeah. So that's my uh, passion, as well as, uh, I mean, I've been also educated accordingly. So I mean, that's what I like to do. Yeah. So a lot of lot of Indian stuff, a lot of handloom stuff. Yes. So that's where my strength lies. Yeah. Most of it is exported. Unfortunately, what happens is that uh, most, uh, uh, you know, a lot of corporates talk about, uh, you know, doing something for the people and, you know, sustainability and stuff. But yeah. Actually, actually, when it comes to pricing and then they kind of back out, no, it's yeah. expensive. <laughs> so my, but still, I keep on trying. That's my yes. job. I try to convince bigger brands to buy handlooms. And, yeah. You know, these traditional or even sustainable fabrics for that matter. Yeah. So people talk about it, but when it comes to actually buying it and implementing it in their stores, it's still, there's a lot of, there's a lot of weakness. Yeah. This is what I feel. So it's specific. You do ethical and sustainable sourcing, yeah, right? Yeah, it's ethical and sustainable, yes. So what does that actually mean? 
see what it means is that uh, see for example the handloom sector in india in handloom sector in india is basically controlled by uh, agents hmm. people who are in between we, uh, we we call it bicholia in hindi okay so uh, these people actually don't pay them uh, well yeah. these people they charge they charge they charge from people like us who actually you know buy and then sell it but they don't actually give them the proper uh, for example i'll tell you in karnataka there are a few villages where uh, the viewers are paid about 25 rupees a meter mm. and the people in between they uh, charge uh, you know brands and stuff about 100 125 rupees a meter so the, what it means is that these guys are earning more than 100 rupees mm. a meter and the viewers are getting just about 20 25 rupees a meter so the idea is to get these viewers direct mm. that is my issue so that we pay them also better yeah and our uh, importantly our uh, fabric becomes more competitive yeah so the, it's very tough in India to get it yeah. done. But yes, we are still trying. We still we we are in touch with a few weavers. So these guys make uh, you know fabrics directly for. We give them business continuously. Yeah. The problem is that it, they don't get business continuously. No? That is the biggest problem. They don't get business continuously. So uh, I have my own brand by the name of Kramaha. So I use only sustainable uh, fabrics in that. Sustainable or handmade fabrics in that. Yeah. But believe me, very t tough to sell. Yeah. Unless you have uh, that kind of a marketing where uh, yeah, I'm, I'm mainly a fabric marketing person, not a garment marketing person. Yeah. But it's, a, it's my passion to build up a brand. So I am trying to do that. I use good fabrics to use linens. I yeah. use hemp, use handmade fabrics, all kind of sustainable fabrics. Okay, so, you could just show yeah. us. so um, this is our warehouse where we keep all the stocks inside here. All the materials regarding car accessories and heat transfer vinyl, all, all the material are here only. We only have this branch, like we don't have any other branch. So I will take you uh, to look for the materials. So the, the, these are the kind of jumbo rolls that we receive from Korea as a surplus stock uh, and we make these jumbo rolls uh, while rewinding these jumbo rolls we make small rolls uh, wh which comes as a finished product to us this is our staff which makes jumbo uh, from jumbo rolls they make small rolls and uh, make make the finished product like this and uh, like this product is uh, like this, this is the finished product which we sell in the market, and uh, um, these are. Come here. These are the types of heat transfer vinyl which she buys from us, and there are lots of variety that we have from uh, like designs, holographic, plain vinyl. These are all the stocks that we have in heat transfer vinyl and there are lots of design that comes from Korea. We, you, uh, we buy heat transfer vinyl from Korea as well and China as well and these products which, which are not box packed uh, comes from Korea as a surplus and these are the material, these are the box packed material. See, you can see that cameo uh, 50 centimeter is written on that. These products come from China as our brand and these are A grade and uh, we like supply from China all the products in our brand name Cameo, which is like running good in our market. And uh, come there, let me show you more materials. So this is Cameo PPF, which, uh, which is our brand. There are, there are many qualities in this PPF, TPH, TPU, Gloss TPU, Matte TPU. Gloss TPH, matte TPH, so we uh, black black TPU, black TPH. So there are many kinds of variety that we deal in the paint production film uh, with our car industry market. And we have so many detailers and wholesalers which buy Cameo, uh, uh, Cameo Premium Shield as well. Uh, the Cameo from us as, and they are uh, like quite running well with these items. So you can uh, come over. Uh, this area and take a look for whole warehouse so that uh, the customers can see that uh, there is all stock available inside the uh, warehouse for each and every material and 
we are the like largest importer of uh, heat transfer vinyl from china and uh, korea uh, there is nobody that uh, brings so much quantity from either china or korea of heat transfer vinyl as well as the window film and uh, ppf in in their oem brand uh this is the slitting machine uh these are the jumbo rolls which comes from korea usa many other countries uh, that sell their surplus stock and we slit them uh, with this with the help of this machine and make the small rolls out of it and make the final production uh, for example when we slit it, it uh, for whatever size we want then the product looks like this and then after this is also in a jumbo roll then we may we also slit these jumbo rolls to a small roll by by making these short rolls and uh, like the 50 meter roll that is the standard size for heat transfer vinyl so after this we pack it into the box and uh, like proper packing and then we supply the product Wait, so how's everything else going? Good, how are you? I'm seeing you after so long. Yeah, no, it's it's good. Busy. <laughs> Busy is normal. I'm just doing the new colors. Just show oh, you all the colors, no, yeah. No, no, you haven't. Okay, there's like lavender, there's like mustard. A red, like a reddish, a steel black, so like not jet black. What is a steel black? <laughs> Looks more steely, <laughs> like more slightly more grey and blue. Okay. And then a green. And a green. So solid colors. So no print, no pattern. Yeah, yeah. So I've also changed the lining, so it's softer. It's so softer than the one you I gave you, the prototype one. Uh huh. But yeah. it's the one with harder. The full full coverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. softer, but it's harder than the original. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, there is more coverage then. Yeah, it'll be the same coverage as the one you have, but it'll feel softer on you. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. No, that's great. So I've I've always thought that you should. I think I don't think I remember. I told you that <laughs> you must do solid colors because it's just a more wider. Mm. You know, you can access more people through it because you know prints and patterns might not work for some people, right? Mm. You know, like with plain colors, would you yeah. still still buy them as pajamas or would you buy them as like oh I'll wear them with my jeans? For the tops. Yeah. I could definitely wear them with my jeans. I'd wear them outside. Like like an airport uh, sort of a thing, mm. or even like lounging around. But when you buy online, so like right now, everyone's only buying the tops. Ah, okay. So even though they're part of a pajama set, yeah, they're still only buying the tops. Really? So like, if it was you, yeah, <clears throat> would you still want to buy it as a set, or would you be like, oh, I'll just buy the top? I think either would work. So mm. I love them as a set because they look super cute. <laughs> okay, they really do, and. The thing with the shorts that you have, for me, for somebody who has bigger hips, they fit so beautifully. Oh. <laughs> they don't feel snug. They don't feel like you know I'm like pulling, pulling and tugging and nothing like that. It feels so amazing. Okay. So I would love to have them like all around as a set. Mm. But even if you're selling um, specifically individually, I think the top works great if you want to like, just just maybe like go out to the market to get something or yeah. you know, just like to the, to the airport, go and wear a bra, yeah. it's so easy. What do you think of 90s? Um, so I used to love wearing like the 90 dresses. Um, I think the, the fact that they ride up, yeah. that's something that like, it, it irritates me a bit, mm. but otherwise it looks super cute. Mm. But are you planning to get some of those made as well? I have two prototypes, but I'm not very convinced. Yeah? Because I feel like it just looks like a big t-shirt. Like, but... <laughs> yeah, but I think it looks cute that way. You know, like the, with the neckline, maybe you can do something. So, yeah. do you have to have a round neckline? No. For, you can do any, is it? Yeah. So yeah. the plan is I'm going to have like ultra customization this time. So you'll basically pick like... It'll, I'll only sell t-shirts. Hmm. That's the plan. And then it'll say... Um, do you want round neck, V neck, oh, low neck, yeah, um, yeah. and then it'll be like you want short sleeve, long sleeve. Right, right, yeah. yeah. I think that would be great. But so, 
that, that that's one vertical, right? Do like right. a customized version, maybe like a gift hamper. Yeah, I want to do the gift. Like a bridesmaid, sort of a gift hamper, whatever, mm. like your hampers or so on. And then doing your regular sets and yeah, so that people, people you can just buy the ready-made stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I think the solid colors would definitely, definitely work more. Right now they're pastels. Yeah. Do you think I should go for more like classic colors? Like more, um, like the, a, the deeper shades. Yeah, the, like a navy, a gray. Yeah, yeah. Do you think I should do those as well? I think so. Okay. I think a navy is, is a must have. I think it's just like a no brainer. You know? mm. And you know, like, so I, because I was at a conference for three days, Mm. I it was so important to wear the right nightwear. You know what I mean? Oh right. If, you know, you of course you have your formal wear during the day, but you know you're hanging out at night, right, with your friends and colleagues. You want to be modest. You want to be uh, comfortable. You don't want to wear shorts maybe because you you want to show skin or whatever. But in those circumstances, I think those kind of sets would really work. Yeah. And you want those, uh, you want the traditional colors, yeah. like, like the navy, like the grays, like the maybe white or something, you know. Mm. Maybe you don't want to wear the pop of red or like something like that. I think that's also a great angle for working professionals, but yeah. I think you're right. <clears throat> I never thought about the plain colors before because I just thought the jump between wearing a bra to no bra would be too big, especially in the Indian market when like most of my market research was very much like, oh, I'd never switch. Really? That's yeah. odd though. Because all women all the time complain of how uncomfortable the bra is. But I think people were, because like, I didn't have the product yet, people couldn't visualize what it was going to be like. So they're like, oh, but like, how can it work? Like, mm. how, we, how can you just have coverage yeah. and no like support? Mm, okay. Maybe yeah. you get that, but you don't really want support when you're wearing loungewear. You uh, know, I, <laughs> I agree. I you think you once we were comfortable. Yeah, definitely. When people saw it, then they were like, "Oh, I get it." Yeah. But before, I think like you still have that mentality of like, "Oh, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, sure. I'm just yeah. don't think I can change from not wearing a bra." Yeah, but I've told you this so many times that you know. I've worn, since I've worn duty, I have not wanted to go back to regular, regular yeah. like sleepwear. I just, I, you know, the other day I had worn a regular one uh, and I felt odd. I had to like, you know, when you open the door and yeah. now especially that there are so many laborers around, there are workmen and everything. You don't want to, you don't want to come out with your nipples hanging out. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. I know you always message with me, you're like, I feel... I feel weird, like I, yeah. don't, I don't feel covered. <laughs> no, I love it. I really do. Like honestly. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. But I do need to work on the colors. I think that's what's like really holding me back right now. Because mm. people have sent me like, you know, I, I was going to release the black and pink ones plain. Mm. And so many people send it to me being like, where are the plain ones? I want to buy the plain ones. I'm like, yeah. I don't have yeah. them. Yeah. They're like, this is just not my vibe. Like this is not my style, which is fair mm. enough. Like there's only two mm. styles right now. Yeah. So I think plain will be, will be it. I think so too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's your work going? Work is good. Work is hectic as usual. Yeah. So we have like, uh, today we are celebrating. So it's like mood is a little lighter. No yeah. Much work pressure. But yeah. Okay. Sometimes it is good to celebrate. Yeah. Lighten mood a little bit otherwise it's always the pressure of work, target, sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look so nice though. Thank you. I'm like, today we have a competition going on inside the office of like best dress for 15th August. Best dress? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you win? Did you win? You win the g gift hamper for that. Oh, that's so fun. That contains my stationery. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! You, you saw the pictures, no? Yeah, have you got stage. it? Have you got the stationery? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've have printed a yeah, few daddies and yeah. planner and I made a gift pack for that. Oh my gosh, that's so nice! Oh, so fun. So I thought, what gift? What we'll gift? My, ah, own ah, gift. Ah, my own gift! <laughs> <laughs> clever. Oh my god. Isn't gosh. it clever? Yeah. Or maybe next time I can uh, give uh, your coupons. Yeah. Your sales coupon to the team. 
Yeah. No, we, no, you no, but it's good. No, no, we can do that because we have a lot of women here. Yeah. Or maybe someday you want to do your product placement. And it is how Product placement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Product placement means you can put up one product along with the brochure. Yeah. And it, it can be an event. Because yeah. we all are like working women here. Yeah, I don't mind, for sure. But uh -huh. I mean, like, your notebooks are great. Yeah, no, notebook is great, but like, <laughs> we, we can change for next, next fancy year. dress. <laughs> <laughs> independence Day, <laughs> Luchi. Yeah, that is the true independence. Yeah. <laughs> Beauty uh, is itself is establish the freedom. Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> for yeah. me, for me. Yeah. I think it's a lot of freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Do you wear do you wear it every day or you wear it just for your walks? And stuff? I currently have only one set. Yeah. So um wearing every day is a tough but yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I'm mostly using it because I have to take my dog for a walk. Yeah. In the society, though I have like I have a gated society, you have yeah. seen that, right? So, uh, it is it is comfortable because you are living at your home, right? So you yeah. don't have to wear bra to yeah. like go like two floors yeah, down, yeah. Yeah. right? <laughs> so if I wear a normal T-shirt, like everybody is still looking at yeah. me like this. But if I wear a looty T-shirt, yeah, over anything, maybe if I'm wearing a jeans or any loose pajama, yeah, the the T-shirt is what I'm wearing. Uh, like mostly yeah rather than the shorts honestly yeah exactly yeah yeah so t because t-shirt has the usp yeah. so t-shirt can be like if i'm going down I even if an in home i'm wearing a spaghetti or a tank top or something <laughs> 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 and if i have to go down yeah right, for yeah. a dog walk then i'll just quickly <laughs> take up a looty wear it yeah and just um, be comfortable be free <laughs> so I'm mostly using it uh, to go to my like dog walks because in a day if I'm at home yeah I have to at least take my dog out like three or four times <laughs> in the work day right as well in the, in work, the morning in, in the, the night. in the morning one is the morning right? yeah second if uh, night morning and night is fixed yeah. like and it takes uh, like half an hour half an hour mm. and like in between, if I am in office, my office boys will take him out. But if I am at home, like 15th August is a holiday. Yeah. So in between, I have to take him two times. Yeah. So four times a day. Mental. <laughs> <laughs> so four, four times a day, uh, if I have to go down earlier, you have to wear a bra, maybe a spaghetti, then a top. It's, it's a hassle. If I I'll just take a looty t-shirt and wear that. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable. I see no old men looking me at like that. <laughs> there are two types of men look like you are like that. I, either they are like very old men or there are school boys. Oh, really? Mm, really. <laughs> Who is like, looking, want to look inside your t-shirt. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, yeah, but you're right. Like, like so basically I'm going to do the new colors yeah. because Right now, it's only the pink and the black. I right? love pink and black both. Honestly. Yeah, pink pink goes with the season of Barbie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Barbie. Yeah, yeah. But I just think most people think it's too specific, like the design. So I'm gonna do the plain shirts. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna just get my um. I actually have the new colors. Okay. Luckily on. Yeah, I've seen your uh, seen those colors on Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just loving those colors. Yeah. I'll show you. I just got these from my um. Oh, yellow is nice. Wait, Mustard. Wait, I'll show you. I'll take the ones which I selected. See, the, he sent me three. Okay. Like, these are actually different. Do you, <laughs> do you see that difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do? Yeah. <laughs> I can barely tell. Yeah, so I've got... Uh, ton tonality of the color is... I can't see the difference. And this is lighter. This is darker. This one is lighter. Uh, this is lighter? Yeah. No, but you tell me which ones you actually like the most because I, I haven't decided on this green yet. Purple, I like. These two are the same. Basically, yeah. Basically this one. This is a steel. Um, this is not black, black. Uh -huh, this is steel. This is yeah, yeah. Steel. Gray, yeah. gray, darker gray. And then. Wait, I have a. See, these ones are off. <laughs> I'll get my green. I, I like this. Wait one second. Which one? This purple. Yeah. This is nice. It, there'll be a green, but it's um, slightly greener. Slightly greener than this one. Okay, to have it. <laughs> I like this color. Yeah, this color is soothing. It's nicer. It's girly. Yeah. 
Well, I'm not sure about the yellow because I feel like for Indian people, especially, I think the complexion is not the... Yeah. It's the... the you want contrast, right, normally? <coughs> Yellow as such is brighter because looty for me is like comfort and lazy. Yeah. So you want? I want like you this want. Color. Oh, this. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Imagine if this was slightly darker. I no, don't. Maybe. I'm. I'm not into green. But do you think? Do you think? I'm you into green. <laughs> <laughs> Bright green. <laughs> Yeah. I like this. But out of this, first is this. Yeah. Second would be this. Yes. Third would be this. Okay. This is no. No. No, I don't like it. You don't wear it? Oh, really? No. Um, because uh, 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 if I'm at home, like, uh, uh, looty for me is like uh, feeling free, comfort, lighter color, happier. Mm. So I, I have an association in my mind that this is something happy. Mm. And th these are these are happy colors. Yeah, and also because I'm an artist, I like colors. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is a I have a bias. Yeah, I like colors. These are pastel colors. These are good for me. But do you think I should still do the pajamas or not? Yeah, yeah, you should do the pajamas. In this, in the matching. In the matching set. But any time pajama for me as mm. a as a consumer, uh, uh, t-shirt and a pajama is more comfortable. Pajama trousers. Yeah, pajama trousers rather than yeah. shorts. Because my goal is, uh, because I live alone. Yeah. I don't have a family. Yeah. So in the home, I can be like... Wearing whatever. <laughs> wearing whatever. Yeah. But uh, for me, the problem is uh, going down for my dog walks or buying a vegetable or buying something. I have to just take few steps, go down, come in the contact with other people. So pajamas are more comfortable and considering India where there are mosquitoes in the rainy season, mm. I prefer pajamas because then there are no mosquito bites. Yeah. That's the practical use. I think that's why people don't want the nighty either because a nighty you still wouldn't really go outside in a nighty. A nighty I would sleep in nighty, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. sleep in it but maybe you wouldn't walk around your society. Huh, I will not walk around in a nighty. Okay, so I normally go to HB Singh because it's a commercial, commercial? Basically not a wholesale store that has a bunch of fabrics. It means I can go do a lot of prototyping because basically my fabric supplier, he won't just supply me like a range of products. He'll source the exact amount because he does wholesale. So often I come here, I just go and get a bunch of fabrics. Like right now I'm looking at cotton. So I go and look at all the cottons and then just like see which colors I like, see which knit types I like, like all kinds of things. And then just take it to my office, sew it. And then when I know what I want, then I go and source it from my actual supplier. It's not expensive, but it's not super cheap. So when you do wholesale, for sure, it's a lot cheaper. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we're gonna just go to the cotton section. Um, like I said, they have all these different sections with different materials, but in the cotton section is where I'm really interested in. And so they have all types of um, like weights of fabric, as well as like colors. I don't know, there's just everything you can possibly think of. Hopefully my guy's here today. Usually it's the same guy. So this is his section, see, section number six. So if you get like lost in this building because it's pretty big, <laughs> you can just ask what kind of material you're looking for and then you go to the right section. Okay, let's come through to the back. Sorry. Okay, so this is like my section. <laughs> so here you have a bunch of whites and creams. They don't look that dissimilar, but they'll all be different weights. Weights meaning like Thickness. Well, it's not technically thickness, it's like weight per, um, it's GSM, grams per meter, per square meter. Yeah, so yes, it is thicker, but it could just be heavier, I guess. Um, so we've got cream and whites. Um, I don't know, you can even see these different textures. 
these I think these are all 100% cotton some are mixed um, I obviously don't know the difference but um, my guy usually does <laughs> and we have so on all of these I think it says like what it is this is cotton this is knit and then it says 180 GSM so that's the weight of it so knit I think is how the knitting style it um, knitting is produced so on each fabric there's either a knit on one side or a knit on both sides I'm not an expert um, but I have single knit I have single knit jerseys um, as my fabric um, yes normally um, if you whatever colors you want they usually have it and they do do printing as well which is what I did because I wanted my specific design um, also because I, this is the first shop I started in, so I literally didn't know where to start. So I literally just went through all these styles of fabric, you know, felt the textures of the ones that I thought would be relevant. So what, I mean, many of the prototypes actually included this nylon. Uh, this one is cotton, this cotton knit. So I had all kinds of ideas, um, you know, maybe if the fabric wasn't so stretchy or maybe if it was knitted. Because, um, you know, for example, when you wear bras, you actually have, um, like, if you get a lace bra, it can actually, like, conceal the shape of the nipple as well. Um, so I use this. This is cotton and they have nylon. This one's nylon. Um, if you're able to see it, this one has, like, a hex-shaped knit. Yeah, so I tried all kinds of things because these materials really reminded me of kind of like 90s and the laces that they, ha that they have, which is designed to have to conceal your nipples and show, have that modesty. Um, yes, and then I, I think I also use some of these, um, not this one, but like the sequin things. Thank you. We're going to my tailor's and she has her own store, but I feel like, so she does two things really. She has her own shop where she upcycles like old saris and stuff and has her own design. She designs them all herself. Um, and she has, has her team that stitches everything, but then she also does a lot of individual tailoring, which is very common here because I feel like people just want to have good like clothes that they have designed themselves so I feel like a lot of her work comes from that um, but basically the reason I ended up working with her was because I went to these manufacturers and they wouldn't take a minimum order unit of less than a thousand so I ended up having to go find someone who could just do my small unit I'm doing a hundred units but it's still considered very small so that's why I ended up working with her but also she's like she's great because <laughs> I needed someone who I could bounce ideas with as well and who also had a lot of knowledge of the technicalities of sewing so she was able to do that for me and that was really great. <laughs> this is her shop. Okay wait, so this is one of her new designs. I helped to do this cutting and it says only God can judge me. Yeah, and it's got this cool hood as well. Oh, whoa. So there's two of these. And plenty of other designs. <laughs> but I love this one. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Oh, so how's it going? <laughs> better. Things are getting better because the season is starting now. Yeah. Last season. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like first, yeah, yeah party. Festive season is now going to start. Are people coming in for your Diwali really, stuff? Really, as in like few walk ins, but now the season would start. Yeah. They, are they buying like this stuff or they're mostly coming for tailoring? Mostly we do tailoring and uh, manufacturing for everybody mm. as we did for you. Yeah, <laughs> so much. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing the new colours. Oh, uh -huh. I put, I've ordered the new colours now. 
Oh, the lavenders and Lavender, all. Lavender, yeah. I've oh, ordered yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I think it'll be end of this week, maybe next week. Uh -huh. Then I'll bring you the new sets. Yeah. <laughs> which will oh, be so. Definitely. Soon. The yeah. mustard, lavender, yeah. I remember. Yeah. You showed me the swatches. Yeah. Because I want to, I think we'll have to do this. We'll do um, a bulk set again. But probably not 100, maybe like 50 or something. Mm -hmm. Then we'll keep another 50 on order where it'll be customized because I want some people to be able to choose between like V neck or Ooh. round neck, short yeah. sleeve, long sleeved. Because some people want crop, right? They want all yeah, kinds. Crop. Yeah. We can do the crop top. But would it be okay? Yeah. Or... Yeah, we'll just have to cut it shorter. Oh. Right? So we'll put both lines, both. Shorter. Layers, yeah, shorter. shorter. Yeah. So, what's the response <laughs> on your website, no. Instagram? Slow. <laughs> Slow? Oh, did I tell you? Everyone's only buying the shirts. Oh, really? Yeah, no one's bought the set. Oh, one per well, one of my friends bought a set. But everyone's just buying the t-shirt. So, we will definitely do t-shirts now. Than, I think so. Yeah, than making pyjamas or shorts. I th but my friends were saying that they... I think they want the option to have trousers, you know, to have pajamas. See, if you want, we can definitely do it. Or you can keep few sets yeah. with pajamas, and I would rather do t-shirts only. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, so uh, I hope uh, what we did uh, with your t-shirts, yeah, we did the justice to them. Yeah. They were sewn well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's little things to fix. Like, you know, the, we, the shorts. Do you remember? We fixed all the shorts. Yeah. Yeah. But so it's okay. It's just... Thing, I think it was a marking and then the little... It was the sewing machine or only on the pink shorts. Because uh -huh. it wasn't on anything else. It was just yeah. that batch. But it's okay. It's funny because I get very anxious because it's like... I know I've done the coverage. But then, like, when people complain about, like, something that's not the coverage, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, no. Like, I've forgotten, you know? Because <laughs> it's not been the focus. I was just like, as long as there's coverage. This yeah. is a feeding period. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope things fall into places now. But I definitely believe that T-shirts would sell more than, you know, and armor, Yeah. Sets, like. And international, like you said. Yeah, definitely. Indian market too, definitely, but I don't know, but which part of India that you have to really think, choose. Wait, so when you have international clients, do you, do you ship it to them? You ship them the bulk? Yeah. So you get the fabric yourself, and then you sew it and you ship it? Of course, when they want, then we have to do that. And um, uh, the shipping, they have their own courier cargoes. They just pick up the stuff from us. She came with one t-shirt she had sewn herself <laughs> and she tried explaining me what she wanted and we made some samples for her according to what she wanted. So when we made the sample she was satisfied and then she wanted a bulk order so we did uh, some pieces like a uh, hundred pieces for her and uh, with the sets, short sets. Then she wanted us to do with pajamas. We did with pajamas. Now what we are doing is only t-shirts. Because maybe people are more inclined towards buying t-shirts rather than the sets. One of the, uh, I think the most helpful thing that Pooja has helped me done is like the prototy prototyping process. Because I don't even know how many prototypes we made. Like. I remember when I came back with the 90s and you were like, oh, I don't oh. remember making, do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> you were like, you don't even remember making them. Exactly. I remember when she, uh, then we did some 90s as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With pockets and all. All I can say is Pooja was not convinced by my first prototype. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and she made me sign a... NDA. A <laughs> she made me sign an agreement that, oh, so this has to be confidential. And believe me, trust me, it's confidential. Yeah. <laughs> but she was like, I don't know, I've not signed one. Like, I think it's not very normal here. Even the other people I had spoken to, but I didn't want to work with. Yeah, but I don't know, the, the stitching on that one was very bad. <laughs> it was like really rough and ready. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
We did scrunchies as well. Yeah, we, we did scrunchies. scrunchies. Yeah. And we did the maternity top. How does it feel founding a product that could be potentially revolutionary and change the way women think about what? I kind of think even if I can make a difference to one person, it's it's good enough, you know? Um, and, you know, when you talk about revolutionary as well, it, it's really interesting because I, I don't want my product to be revolutionary. For me, in my mind, this is not a revolutionary product. This is a normal product that should have existed all the time. The fact that bras were the first thing that were invented as opposed to, you know, something like this, is just so strange to me. I want this to be an everyday product. I want companies to be like, yes, I want to use this technology. I want to put it in my designs. I want it. It should be how clothes are actually made. It's, I think this is a definitely like a women's thing. And I think it's because women are so used to accepting being uh, uncomfortable. They're okay being physically uncomfortable for modesty, for beauty. You know, I don't really see men's clothing being like, oh, you know, it's so, oh, it's so painful, but I'm still gonna wear it. <laughs> for me, you know, I've always had bigger breasts, like since I was, you know, 14 or 15. And I, I've never understood why I've always been so uncomfortable. Like, what for?